Welcome. It is March. We have gotten new assets from the Epic Marketplace. Let's take a look at them. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So here's the blog that explains the assets that have been added. There's currently going to be five in the free for the month and one permanently available. I will leave a link to the blog post in the description down below. So what we have this month is we have a base bicycle with uh, animations. We have some bridges. We have contemporary restaurants. Uh, we have a Greenwood Fantasy Village. And we have a journeyman's minimap. This is a plugin. Uh, in addition to that, the free content for permanent selection is going to be this realistic starter visual effects pack uh, volume two. So let's look at these a little bit closer. Starting off, we have the bicycle pack. So here you can see the different animations that you have available. You can see that the wheels are turning on the bicycles and you see that the character moves along depending on what kind of a stride it's keeping on the bicycle. So you seem to have a small selection, maybe, let's see, about 10 or so animations available, including mounting and dismounting as well over here. So that's what's included in the bicycle pack. That's fairly straightforward. Next up, we have the restaurant pack. Uh, this looks like a small, cozy little restaurant with a bunch of small props. If you zoom out, you can see that it's just a <clears throat> small building working as a example of what a restaurant could be looking like using the assets. Something to make note of, though, is that not all of these assets are available as individual assets. Uh, by that, I mean if you, for example, click on one of the uh, tables or if you click on the specific meshes here the the plates and stuff like that you can see they are all grouped together and checking out in the prop department of this you can see that as as it comes down to meshes there are not that many many of them actually exist in in groupings together so you don't have the ability to like move around a fork or um, a napkin or anything like that so the amount of meshes in this pack is actually fairly small. Uh, but if you're just looking to do something very, uh, something on in the periphery, maybe not something that you want to go and do too much detail in, maybe something you just glance in against a window or something, then maybe this, this should work just fine. Moving on, we have the bridge pack. The bridge, bridge pack consists of two blueprints that are used to switch between uh, six different shapes of the bridges. You can modify the length of the road and the depth of the concrete pillars on the bridges. Uh, one of the blueprints is said to be replicated and it's using smart U UV according to the producer of this pack. And let's take a hands-on look on this. So this is what the project looks like when you start it up. And here you can see we have the two different uh, blueprint bridges. And this is the first one. So what you have here is some very basic uh, functionality to change the behavior and look of the bridge. You have some different parts the bridge consists of that you can alter and edit if you want to. Uh, and in addition to that, you also have some uh, basic parameters to use. So you can extend how far the road will go, for example, or how far down the, the foundation will go downwards here under the bridges. In addition to that, you also have the ability to change the look of the bridge slightly with this drop down here. And for bridge number two, it's a different bridge with a different layout. You have similar parameters here as well and slightly different looks for the bridge if you want it along with some uh, static meshes here that you could alter if you wanted to so that's in essence what this pack is and i guess if you are looking to have a long bridge then maybe this could be something of use um, i'm a little bit uh, on the fence about this one because the variety is sort of low but uh, maybe with uh, altering the static meshes belonging to the bridges, you can get something that's 
feels very unique and breaks it up from other people using it maybe and also since it's a bridge maybe people don't pay that much attention to it if you see it in a game as well moving on we have the greenwood village this is claimed to be a mobile friendly model asset uh, with modular modular landscapes it has over 100 unique objects you can customize house colors it comes with two pre-built scenes uh, to demonstrate what you can use uh, to make out of the different assets uh, one is a night scene and why one is a day scene and according to the creator of this pack it is good for both top down and third person and i can buy the the top down the third person might be a little bit too close for the fidelity of this pack but maybe it's fine because it has a very stylized look so it depends a little bit of what you're after essentially getting into the specifics these are the assets that are included into the pack so this is the overview map where you see all the individual assets that you get so you can see that there's a fair amount of decent assets in a variety of different uh, fields you have a few different houses that feel a little bit differently you have some different hay ball situations here you have some planks and uh, some fruits, vegetables, and also some boats and some foliage or rather trees and rocks down here. So it's not a whole lot, but it's enough to make a, a little scene out of it, I would claim at least, which we will see in the night and day scene in a little bit. In addition to that, they also have these tile-based sort of landscape uh, modules, which you can mix and mash to produce uh, different areas as well. So these are probably uh, pretty nice if you're making something that is actually tile based when you're building a map out of it so this could be useful if you want to have sort of a overworld map I guess or if you're just building something to supplement the village over here so here we can see the day scene in action now the map is not huge and thanks to the fog we can't see all that much but it's of decent size and you can see that even with this small amount of assets you can actually create something that looks pretty nice um, the variety is not that big but for a small little village it probably is enough uh, you will pretty quickly get repetition when it comes to the houses despite the colors i believe uh, but uh, overall it's a very cute and uh, stylized pack which uh, I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy and find usable. Next up, we have the minimap. Now, this one is a plugin and it features a bunch of functionality actually. Uh, you have the obvious minimap functionality and you have the ability to create backgrounds and rectangles and circular borders and stuff like that. You can control sizes manually or via UMG. You can center the map on different areas or actors. It supports uh, texture switching. It interacts with the UI through interaction events. It uh, allows you to change properties like uh, icons and having icons be customizable. Uh, it can also play around with fog of war. Uh, so you can have fog of war that works for the minimap or for the world uh, in addition it can work in conjunction with icons from items that you place in the world so they appear on the map or minimap depending on how you want and all of this is made in blueprints and c++ and it also comes with a documentation that allows you to uh, follow steps to implement these things we can take a look at that now as well so here we have the documentation for the minimap and I will leave the, the link to this in the description below as well. So here you can see all the different steps that you need to go through to access the different functionalities that are available in this plugin and how to make use of them. Um, I haven't had the time to sit down and delve into this deep, but it seems like from a surface level, this is something that has a lot of use for a lot of different things. 
and uh, could prove quite valuable if you're interested in doing something like an RPG or a quest system or something like that or just want a minimap to display your world for the player in a convenient fashion. Last out we have the permanently free pack which is realistic visual effects volume 2 and this is probably the asset that is going to be the easiest to use because visual effects are used everywhere and even though you probably don't think about them a lot they are used for large small things and as such this pack is probably going to be useful for anyone regardless of what you are doing and here you can see we have a wide, wide variety of different effects we have smoke and hits and steam we have embers and sparks a lot of different sparks we also have blood and explosions environmental effects like dandelions leaves fireflies butterflies fish destruction of different types like concrete glass metal wood electric ceramic building destruction and lastly we have a bunch of fire effects of different types sizes and sorts oh no we also have water so bubbles and water dripping leaking so yeah I'm sure that this pack will probably be the most easily used for anyone and as such the most appreciated. Although the other packs were also very interesting in this month and I hope that you get use of both that and this video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video leave a like. If you did not like it leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.